Hey, we love. <laughs> Hold on, let me go ahead and put this, pin this comment. All right, so this is this is uh, just me talking about the importance of knowing what great grandma ate. And um, this comes from the book Self Care Regulations, which will be launching tomorrow around 11:50 uh, p.m. on a seven. <laughs> uh, and I just wanted to briefly touch on this because it's something that actually. Um, Nisha, you and I spoke briefly about this too um, during our live, and I just really wanted to to speak on it. And that is that there is power and there is importance in knowing what great grandma ate. And the reason why I say what great grandma ate only is because I think now, you know, there's a generation where their grandmother may not have grown up on those old ways. You know what I mean? Um, they may have grown up on, on processed foods and on the the newly added oils and things like that to the to the uh, human diet. So I decided to go back to great grandma because I kind of felt felt like that was a bit more a bit more a bit more telling of what the old ways were, you know, and what they are. And I'm very very thankful, very thankful and blessed and honored that you know, my people on my dad's side are Gullah Geechee and, and we maintain a lot of those old ways and still live that way today. And I'm very thankful for that because I, I, you know, I'm able to, to use that. And, and a lot of that is in this, in the book, self-care regulations. However, we have been conditioned to believe that great grandma didn't know what she was talking about. And great grandma was this, or even grandma for, for a lot of us was this old, you know, child of an ex-slave that didn't know anything. And um, that is very unfortunate because it's a lie. And in the book, when it comes to implementing the self-care regulations, the body, mind, and spirit, I have actionable content uh, for actionable steps for people to implement to begin to, you know, begin to, to actually change and, and transform their self-care to what will work for them, things that they can do to begin to, to see what works for them. And it's outside of the, it's in addition to the self-care tool, you know. And one of those things is going back to your family, to your elders and finding out what they ate. Because a lot of times, especially for black people, we think that slavery or, or enslavement, <clears throat> whether you are, you, you, you know, claim to be indigenous and, or, or you, you know, whatever, I, it doesn't matter, right? how you got here and how it happened or whatever. I'm not talking about that part. I'm just saying that for many people, we have been taught that our people didn't know what they were talking about. They didn't know what they were doing and that they learn how to eat from slavery. And that's not true. The principles of eating our people always had. We've always had those principles. The foods might have changed because of the environment, but we still maintain those same principles. We've been eating organs. We've been eating, you know, animal. We've been soaking and cooking and fermenting our vegetables. We've been doing that. And we just brought those things with us and kept doing it. You know, and it's the old ways that will save us in this time of disease. You know, and we we look at uh, Weston A. Price, who, I'm, you know, people, you'll hear me mention him a lot. However, we look at someone who was, quote unquote, educated, like Weston A. Price, who, who was a dentist in the 1930s, who went to every continent and spoke with the chiefs of the most, you know, isolated tribes to find out why were their teeth so healthy? Why were they so healthy? And the, quote unquote, civilized men, as they said, were, you know, damaged and dying and, and had rotten teeth. And so... What he found was that these people knew what to eat, you know, and they were eating the foods that they had been eating for thousands of years, you know. And so it's interesting that oftentimes we, we tend to look past 
our elders as if they didn't know what they were talking about. You know, we tend to look past our elders as if as if they don't know. But like I said, one of the principles in self-care that I talk about when it comes to food is you got to find out what your people ate, where you came from and what they ate. For real, for real. Not this romanticized idea of who you are, but to really go ask your people who they are, get their last names and really go look and find out who you are. Understand what they ate. Okay, we got to know what they ate. Why is that important? Because you'll find out that. Okay, so let's just say myself, for example, right? I told you guys that on my dad's side, I'm Gullah Geechee. Well, my family for as long as I can trace back, which is up to the 1700s. We have always had farmland. We've always grown our own food and we've always been into animal husbandry. So we farmed our own animals as well. Slaughtered our own animals as well. Okay. Trap, fish, hunted. We've done that. And for the most part, most people have at that point in time, especially black people, because, you know, we wasn't allowed in certain things in certain places and all that kind of stuff. Right. Well, my grandma, and my great grandma were cooking in lard. They were cooking in bacon uh, fat or bacon grease or pork fat. You know, they were cooking in beef tallow or beef fat. They were eating eggs. You know what I mean? They were drinking raw dairy from the cows that my that my great uncle had to uh, milk before he went to school every day. They were eating the raw butter, saving the butter. And guess what? Every elder in my family that didn't pass from um, like, you know, just random circumstances of, you know, maybe like accidents and things like that. They all they all passed from natural death. Okay, just natural causes. It was just time. But guess how long they were living? Up until the hundreds. My great my my grandmother right now is 94. 94, and this is not uncommon. This is something that is like common in my family. And in many of our families, if we go back and just ask, you know, and it's like Going back and, and me now, when I go back home and I ask and I'm like, hey, what is so they look at me like, dang, you know, you they you know, they're happy to tell me they're, they're excited to tell me what they grew up eating, how they grew up taking the fruit off their trees and preserving it and how, you know, they cured their own meat and how my great grandmother used to, uh, you know, put bacon and, and eggs on the stove and made these big buttermilk biscuits. You know what I'm saying? Like, they're happy to tell me those old ways, and I'm happy to know it because it's saving my life, for real. The issue is not what our grandmothers and, grand, and, and, and great-grandmothers ate. It's the, the things that started to cause the issue, because I see the great divide, right? I see my elders, meaning my grandmother and her siblings. Okay, so my grandmother's 94. Her siblings, 91, 88. 86. You see what I'm saying? And when I tell y'all, just wait, I'm going to go. I'm going back down there in about uh, maybe like a week or so because it's mango season. And y'all, all my family got like grows and mangoes and stuff like that. Oh, Lord, I can't wait. I'm telling them mangoes. I'm talking about trees that's that's over 50 years old. OK, producing mangoes is about the size of my head and I got a big head, you know. But I mean, you know, it's just like. I look at their at, at my grandmother's generation and her her siblings I'm telling you, my, my great uncle, he takes me out to to, uh, to breakfast every time I go down there to just like ask me, you know, like how's life and just have just have time with me and just be that that elder in my life. Man, I'm telling you. <laughs> Listen, these he still drives to this day or mira, to this day. The man is driving. OK, I'm not going to lie. I was in the passenger seat looking like, look, let me check. <laughs> Let me be sure, okay? You know, but he's 91 with all his faculties. You know? My other uncle, he's 80, he's 88. All his faculties. My other my other uncle, he's 86. That's the Uncle Harry that I show oftentimes his garden. Where I go when I go down there, I go down there and go to his garden to get like collard greens and turnips and and onions and rutabagas and sugar cane and cabbage. I just planted some cabbage uh, last time I was down there in the, what it was like, maybe February, something like that when I was down there, January, February, you know, and we'll be planting some okra and some, some black eyed peas uh, when I go down there this time. 
And it's like, I look at them, they're all healthy. This man is 86 in his yard, todos los días, every day, you know, healthy. And then I look at my dad's generation and I look at my dad's siblings and they all look totally different. Great stock. And you can see how they have great genes, but something's different. They're just not as healthy, you know. They're not as healthy as they're not as healthy as my grandmother and her siblings. You know, they they're not as strong as them. And you can see the difference. And what is the main difference? Well, by the time my dad, who was the third child, by the time my dad came into being, right? You had what? Canola oil, vegetable oil, cereal, you know, margarine, Crisco. You got all of these unnatural foods, processed foods coming into being. And the reason why I brought up Weston A. Price initially was because that's what he noticed. He noticed that the so-called primitive people, as they called them in the book, the so-called primitive people were eating natural foods of their environment, animals and even the organs on the pre-fertility diet and things like that. And they were, you know, growing their food and fermenting and cooking and, and all of these things to optimize digestion, which is what I talk about in the, in the book as well, self-care regulations. I go through that whole thing. However, they were doing all this to optimize digestion and make sure they were eating great foods. And when those same people, when the progeny of those same tribes went into the city, they realized that they started to have problems. They would have diseases. They started to get tooth decay, cavities. The, the children that they had started to come out deformed. They started to have crowded teeth, narrowing of the brain, uh, not the brain, excuse me, the, the, uh, the cranium, you know. They started to notice all these physical deformities when the children of those same really healthy tribes came into the city and started eating what they called the white man's food. Now, this is a white man that did this and, and called that food white man's food, the foods of commerce. And I see the same thing that happened in my family. The same thing. And oftentimes these quote unquote conscious spiritual people who really are not even practicing real spirituality because real spirituality has three, three principles involved. And anything else above that is either a system that incorporates those three principles or building upon those three systems. Those three systems of those three foundations of spirituality is connection to nature. Every indigenous culture, religion, uh, today, whatever, it is based on nature, spirit, nature forces, period. Every single one is based on nature. Your connection to nature, your connection to your intuition, and your connection to your ancestors and or lineage, period. And, and you can't tell me a spiritual system today that is not based on those three principles. And I find it to be so interesting how all of these quote unquote conscious people, not all, but a lot on these conscious people, they, they love talking about consciousness and spirituality, but they skip right past one of the main principles of spirituality. And that's ancestors, knowing your ancestors and what they ate, knowing who they were, who they are. You cannot know yourself without knowing that because it's a part of it. And yet we skip right over great grandma and what she ate and start talking about how we were vegan and start talking about how, you know, we didn't do this and we didn't do that. And great grandma is a is a is a main is, is the main key to our health. No matter what you are, no matter who you are, no matter where you come from, I don't care what your race and ethnicity is. You need to know what your great grandma ate. Because great grandma was out here living her best life as for as far as her health, right? <laughs> you know, for us black folk, that was just there's just no such thing <laughs> in America as that. But you know what I mean? I'm just saying. They were still living to their older age. They were still living to their nineties, their one hundreds. You know? The reason why my great great excuse me, my great grandmother Lucille, she passed from I believe it was throat cancer or something like that. But the reason why she developed that was because she worked. See, at that time down in Florida, they, they worked in what they called the citrus groves and, and they worked in the fields and, the, and they had to, uh, you know, produce the vegetables and stuff like that. You know, 
and they had to work. And I'm talking about my great grandpa worked for what you talking about 75 cents a day. My great uncle tells me all the time how he would go out and work and he would make like 50 cents a day. And then he did that and, and did more so he could pay for school and stuff like that, you know. But you talking about they had to work. And so she would chew uh, like this, the chewing tobacco to stimulate herself so that she could work, you know, and work more than she would be normally be uh, normally be able to. Because she had, what, 12 kids or something like that, eight or 12 kids, I think eight that like made it and a few that may have passed at birth and, or whatnot. But she had a lot of kids, you know, and then and so they all worked. Now, don't get me wrong. They they had acre. They had over like a hundred acres of, of land, and so you know they had their own animals. They grew their own food and things like that. But you know, it's other things that you that you need money for. So they still had to work. And we skip right past our people, and we think they're stupid, and we think they're dumb, and they think that we think that they were just some, you know, children of ex slaves who didn't know any better who was just out here wading in the water, you know? And it's really sad. And oftentimes, this quote-unquote conscious community has made us believe that our grandmothers and our great-grandmothers were just ignorant and stupid and didn't know anything. And we skip right past their wisdom and go right into comedic science and go right into X, Y, and Z. And I'm not against science. I'm not against, you know, higher knowledge. I'm not against these systems. I practice Ishe Shay. I'm not against these things. You know, well, technically not practices. It's a way of life, however. You know what I mean. I'm not against these things. However, one thing that is embedded in all of those spiritual systems is what? Ancestors. Knowing who you are. And we cannot forget that. And in the book, I talk about that. Self-care regulations. I talk about how one of the main things that will allow us to know how to eat is knowing what our greats ate. We got to know that. My my great-grandpa, Sankey, Sankey Hudson, he was known in his old age for having such strong teeth that he could bite and pick up a chair with his teeth. I'm talking about an old man with his teeth. You know? So I didn't come from those sick people. And majority of us did not come from sick people. You know, maybe I think our generation of our parents, I think was the first generation that started to, to like deteriorate or degenerate in a way because of the introduction of all the canola oils and the, the vegetable oils and the Crisco and the cereals and all that kind of stuff. And you know they 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 kind of stopped giving organ meats and they stopped they stopped a lot of the things that they used to do they stopped the old ways but it's up to us to get back to those old ways because i'm telling you when i stopped being vegan i got back to those old ways and my health returned to me you know the first thing i said to myself was man what do i do now how do i how do i eat now because i you know i've been vegan for over 6 years now i don't know what to do boom Everything my dad taught me came back to me. It was just like do what you do what you told do what you were trained to do, do what you were told to do. And just like that my health came back to me. You know? So I just wanted to I just wanted to talk about how important it is for us to know what great grandma ate and for us to to acknowledge the wisdom of our ancestors. They were not some ignorant people who developed culture out of oppression. That is not it okay the culture that was developed within oppression was to ascend that crap <laughs> that's why you that's why you get those negro spirituals okay that's why you get that crap that's why you start singing randomly when something going wrong okay because it is a way to transcend obstacles and challenges in your life and we want to go to everything but our ancestors to get that information. And it's time that we start to acknowledge and give the proper respect and honor due to our ancestors, to our lineage, in addition to getting the information that goes past that. You know, whether it, whether it goes back to Africa or whether it goes back to indigenous cultures here in America or South America or whatnot. Whatever you choose to practice from that point. However, we cannot 
look past the wisdom of our great grandmothers and great grandfathers. They knew what they were talking about. When they told you to eat those organs, ladies, that time of the month, and you feel drained, yeah, mommy, you need to eat some liver. You need to get you some beef liver, some chicken livers. You need to get on it. What are we doing? We're out here. I was talking to, I don't know if she's still on here, but, you know, niche about eating fruits during your period. And it's like, what? Do you know how much you're going to mess up? Like if you're doing fruit juice cleanses or fast or whatever, especially during your period, do you know how much that's going to mess up your hormones, ladies? Your blood sugar needs to be stabilized in order for your endocrine system to work properly, which is how your hormonal system works properly. And you need cholesterol for all that to work. So you need animal fats. You need animal foods. You need to be eating some liver and getting some good fat in your body and not just olive oil. I'm talking about butter. I'm talking about pork fat if you eat pork, if it's not a taboo, you know? Because that's another thing. Like, people be like, oh, you know, I don't eat pork and do away with the fork and all that kind of stuff. And it's like, yeah, that sounds cute, cute and all that kind of stuff. But you don't know what you're talking about. The reason why cultures don't eat certain foods is because it is against the deity that they worship, period. End point. It is against the deity that they worship. When you get into certain, um, certain like, traditional systems, it could be against, it could be a taboo for you to eat beans, Certain kind of beings, it could be a taboo because of the deity that you, you know, that that is with your spirit or or that you venerate or worship or whatever, what have you. Just like in the Bible and in Islam, it's against, I think, to eat pork. Why? Because that particular deity does not deal with the pork. That's why. Not because pork is bad. It's going to give you parasites and all this kind of stuff. Listen, okay, my whole family grew up in pork. They don't have no parasites. They're not walking around here with a crazy mind and all that kind of stuff. People don't like hearing that because it goes against what they believe. But the reality is just because you believe it doesn't make it any true or nothing. Like, it's just what you it's just what you choose. You know, but if it's a taboo for you, then okay, because that's what that's the deity that you choose to follow. That's that's the system you choose to follow. But let's not act like just because it's a taboo that it's a it's bad to eat in general. That's not true. Like I said, it's it's some people's taboo. They can't eat certain beans. They can't eat coconuts they can't eat you know certain fruits or whatever because it's against what they choose to follow you know but regardless of that we have to get back to what our great grandmothers ate and knowing what they did and we have to start venerating our ancestors and giving honor to that before we start jumping into talking about Orisha, before we start jumping into Loa, before we start talking about all these different other things. And I give respect to those systems as, as well. Don't get me wrong. However, you still got to give respect to your ancestors no matter what. So that's just something I talk about in the book. I'm going to go live again, uh, most likely a little bit later. And tomorrow um, about, you know, releasing the book and everything like that. This book is just, this book is revolutionary because I think it's one of the first books that is just like fundamental in the basics of the body, mind, and spirit. The body meaning nutrition and exercise. The mind meaning the questions you ask yourself and your perspective. And spirit, those three fundamentals that I talked about. No traditional systems, no spirituality, like none of that extra stuff. I just talk about the basics of nature, your intuition, and your lineage. That's it. And with those basics, we can build from there. With those basics, you can you can build whatever you choose, you know, because it's your life. However, we need the basics. Too many of us are out here trying to do calculus, and we don't have the basics of how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide. You know what I mean? We need those basics when it comes to our health. We need to know those things without dogmas, without doctrines, and without manipulation. Because there's so many of us out here... That you want to, you know, we, we have this, we, we want to be better. We want to do better for ourselves. You know, we, we, we want to elevate ourselves and we want to be healthy. And we have that desire. And so that's a good thing. There's nothing wrong with that. However, our intentions, you know, people always talk about good intentions. And, and like they say, good intentions are paid are what the road to hell is paved with good intentions. Why? Because a leader validates good intentions. 
a leader validates intentions. And what do I mean by that? Let's take a gun. If you have a gun, that gun can do harm or it can protect and it can and it can be a righteous thing. But if you shoot somebody in the foot and then say, oh, my bad, I did not mean to do that. Do, does that take the bullet out their foot? No. Does it take away the fact that they could potentially die? No. <laughs> you know, it doesn't take away the fact that what you did has a consequence, regardless of your intention. So rather than just good intentions, it's very important that we also do the work to, to validate those intentions. Okay, my intention is to be healthy, right, when I was vegan. But did I validate being vegan? Hell no. Did I jump right into that? Yes, I did. <laughs> Why? Because it was all like, oh, you know, the 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 white man has done this and, and all this kind of stuff and we need to be back to who we are and, and follow what our ancestors did and then and then that's when the propaganda and the lies start sliding in little by little. Even though your grandma ate bacon, you still being told online that you were vegan and that your ancestors were vegan, you know? And oh, that was just some slave stuff. That's why they did that. Even though and when you go to Africa and I've been, when you go to Africa They've been eating meat since the beginning of the time. And they will tell you. (laughs) Okay? You cannot take meat away from an African. I'm going to tell you that right now. It's impossible. And if you go there now and you see people doing vegan stuff, it's because of American black people have brought that nonsense over there. Anyway, my whole point is we have to start... Following what our ancestors did would be to hunt and eat fresh meat and grow our own produce. Yes, exactly. That's exactly That's exactly what we need to do. Like I said in the beginning, I'm Gullah Geechee on my dad's side. I'm Cuban on my mother's side. On my dad's side, we had over 100 acres of land. It's split up amongst, the, amongst my grandmother's siblings now, you know, but that's how they grew up. They milked their cows. My, my great uncle, he tells me all the time I had, he had to milk the cows before he went to school. I asked him, I said, did you have any problem digesting that milk? He said, no, I didn't have any problem digesting that milk. But I used to think I was lactose intolerant. Why? Because I was drinking commercialized milk that was been pasteurized and homogenized and all this crap that it doesn't have any of the, the enzyme lactase in there naturally for you to digest it anymore because it's been cooked out. But when you're drinking like more raw or non-homogenized milk, it has a lactase enzyme in there so you can break it down, you know. And not only did they trap and hunt and, and eat fresh meat, guess what they also did? They grew their own food. My great my great uncle right now, Uncle Harry, another one of my great uncles, and I'll show you guys when I go down there. They Well, all, all of them actually, they, they grow food. However, he grows his own food <laughs> and he grows it for the majority of the family. I'm talking about, y'all, this garden is beautiful, gorgeous. Another one of my uncles got whole groves, but the city had to take that. And it was like eminent domain or whatever, because they were building roads, right? So that's what that happened. I don't know anyone in my family who is lactose intolerant, though they tell us black people are more likely to have it. It's a lie. Black people are not more likely to have it. I'm glad you really asked and, and dove into like your family because... Black people are not led to a tolerant, bro. Like, now, I will say this. Black people are not a monolith. So I won't say all. I'm just going to say that from my knowledge, I have not come across a true lactose intolerant black person for real. I've come across black people who have eaten terrible quality dairy and have problems and say, because I have problems eating this poor quality dairy, I'm lactose intolerant. Also, we don't get enough sun. That's important for retaining the nutrients from the milk that we've heard. Yep. We don't get enough sun on our whole body because we're not naked enough, really. Because the, if the sun doesn't touch it, it's not going to do anything. So it, it, needs to, it needs to be touched from the sun as well. So we don't get enough sun. And not only do we not get enough sun, but also we don't get enough vitamin D from our diet to even... I mean, we don't get enough cholesterol from our diet and vitamin D. We, we just, to, to digest and absorb, we, we don't. Or to even make proper hormones. We don't get enough. And why is that? Because a lot of us are not eating the food that our great-grandmothers ate. And a lot of us are not doing the things that our great-grandparents did. We're just not doing it. We're not growing our own foods. We're not eating the foods that 
are around us, which is animals and and plants, we're not doing it. You know? So this is the reason why we're so sick. And then obviously it's like we're in a modern society, so you know, Wi-Fi and, and all the things that we really almost like can't control in a way. You know, they, they do damage us and they do hurt us. However, at the same time, it doesn't make it any better that we're eating very poor quality foods. It doesn't make it any better that we don't even know what our what our people ate. And you got people on here who will come up in here and try to tell me, oh, we, you know, you can't digest meat. And it's like, do you really understand that I was vegan for six and a half years, like over six years? And the first time I ate eggs and fish, I didn't have a single problem. Not one problem. Not one. <laughs> meat absorbs so well into the body. That it digests so well into the body. It's crazy, really. And it just made me just like have to humble myself of all the lies that I told. Which is why I'm so vocal about this. Because it's, it's up to me, I feel, and I feel compelled to restore that harmony between body, mind, and spirit. To get back to those very rudimentary basics. Because we have skipped right past the basics and gone into some stuff that you really need the basics to get it to put in proper context. But we have YouTube now. So everybody's a master teacher now. Everybody's a, you know, a doctor now. Everybody, everybody is a, a herbalist. Even though they don't have any teachers, they don't have any lineage. I didn't eat pork or beef for 14 years, and I can tell the difference now that I've been eating anything, like everything again. Even my hair is healthier. Listen, I'm going to be real with you. When I'm, at, like, down in Florida, my see, like, my people don't play that whole, like, you don't eat this and you don't eat stuff. Like, they will look at you like you straight up crazy, like facts. Like, they will respect it, but they're going to be like, okay. <laughs> Why? Because, they're, because their parents are living to their hundreds and have lived to their hundreds eating this stuff, you know? That's why. And I was against the pork, too, because I was a Hebrew Israelite. And I talked about that before, but I was a Hebrew Israelite, you know, and, and the Bible is, is against pork, at least in the Hebrew Israelite uh, doctrine and community, whatever. And, uh, you know, it's like you, they 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 don't eat pork, but it's it's not they don't just stop there. Right. They they not only just not eat pork because it's a taboo because of their religion. They then try to make it seem like pork is just this dirty, filthy animal and and all this kind of stuff. And it's just like, you know, first off, it's how you raise the animal. That's number one. And then number two, that's not true. <laughs> it's just not true. And I'm going to tell you this. Eating, like I would save the bacon grease from what I cooked. And when you get some quality, good lard bacon grease, oh my gosh, you can tell the difference and nothing tastes even beef bacon is like, I would think like top tier bacon, but nothing tastes better than pork bacon. Now, if it's a taboo for you, you know, because of your religion and stuff like that, I get it. But I'm gonna tell you this right now. I was just in straight denial about pork. I really was. I really was. You know, but unless unless it's a taboo for you, I don't see why you shouldn't eat it. Just get some high quality meat and you'll be all right. You will be OK. And people often think when I say meat, I'm just talking about commercial meat that you just go to the store and just pick up and you don't know where it comes from. I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about that at all. I'm talking about high quality meat that you go to your farmer or to your butcher. Find them. They are in your area. You can go to rawmilk.com and find rawmilk.com and find local butchers, local farmers that give quality uh, meat and dairy in your area. You know, you can do that. Bacon is totally undefeated. Listen, okay, like bacon is a health food. I don't think I would go back to pork. Yeah, no, I mean, I get it. I <laughs> I get it. I said the same thing, too, when I first went, when I first stopped being vegan. But I'm telling you, like, it, it, the, the thing is, like I said, if it's a taboo for you, I don't have a problem with it. You know what I mean? It's, it's a taboo for you. You can't eat it because of what you choose to, to do or whatever. But it's like pork doesn't have parasites like people think it does. And... My family grew up on pork, okay? So they all live to the hundreds. <laughs> I, you know, I, I don't have a problem with pork, but bacon is definitely undefeated. But definitely eating chicken, turkey, no pork or white women. Well, the thing is, like I said, to say no pork or white women, first off, that is 
that is in, in a sliding of religion, you know, and or a person's spiritual uh, belief. Because people worship certain deities, certain deities do not take or do not or do not allow you to eat certain animals and even certain vegetables. Like I said, it's certain people, they can't eat certain beans because of the deity that they worship. But it's nothing wrong with pork. It's just the religion does not want you to eat pork because the deity does not want you to eat that because it goes against what that deity needs in order to be properly with you or walk with you or what have you. But it's some people who their deity will not allow them to eat beans. They will not will not allow them to eat certain vegetables. People have demonized pork so much because they say, oh, it has parasites and it's unclean and all this kind of stuff. But again, you have to separate religion from what from from propaganda. OK, people don't eat certain things because it's a taboo against their deity, their deity. And that makes sense. I can't say nothing against that. But to then demonize the food just because it's a taboo for you. is propaganda. All meat has parasites, even our bodies. That's what people cook the meat. Well, you know, the thing is, is that, that that is true. And it's all about the harmony, right? It's all about harmony. That's what it's about. See, so people think that, like, parasites, you, you, you got to, like, cleanse out all the parasites. There's no way on this earth that you're going to be alive and make it to cleanse out all the parasites in your body. And then how are you going to measure that? What the old folks used to do is just deworm themselves. Every When I went to Africa... She said every three months, but every three, six months or something like that, people deworm themselves and that's it. And that maintains the harmony. Simple as that. It's really that simple. Harmonic resonance. Exactly. So I'm not against people when they say they don't eat pork because I don't know what people follow. I don't know what deity they worship or venerate or whatever. I don't know. And I give respect to what people choose not to eat. It's some people like for a lot of Hindus, right? Um, I was at an Airbnb and it was, it was hosted by Hindus. Well, guess what? I thought Hindus didn't even eat meat. No, they eat meat. So, maybe not all, but these eat meat, okay? <laughs> They're from Nepal. They eat meat. They were eating goat, chicken, fish, all that. But what they don't eat is beef. They'll eat dairy and butter, but they don't eat beef. Why? Because it's against their practice. But they don't go around saying that beef got parasites and beef will make you sick and beef is causing disease and all this kind of stuff. You know what I mean? So we just got to be very mindful of the fact of that. And I always purpose to, to, to no cow. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they don't, they don't eat that. It's sacred. Exactly. It's sacred. And that's the thing. People don't realize that sometimes these animals are not eaten through different religions because it's sacred for whatever reason. It's sacred for whatever reason. So that's why some people will say no pork, you know, because, because that deity or, or it may be unclean to that deity. But then again, like I said, it's not just pork. It's it's different things. For instance, um, for some people, they can't have palm wine, right? If you if you are in Isheshe and you practice or you you know your way of life is Isheshe Lagba, for and and you and your um, the Orisha that guides your destiny is Abatala, then guess what? You can't do palm wine. It is a taboo for you. But is palm wine going to kill you? No, it's very delicious from what I hear. But for those who are with that deity, then no, you can't have it. And it's the same thing for like certain uh, for the Abrahamic religions. They don't do pork. But I find it to be interesting, though. Here's here's the kicker. Here's the kicker with this one. People in the Abrahamic religions will say no to pork, but they'll eat shrimp. <laughs> right. Like some people in Islam won't eat pork, but they'll eat shrimp. They'll eat oysters. They'll eat crabs. Right. But the pork is off limits. And, you know, obviously some Christians don't care. They'll eat whatever. But I'm just saying that it's funny because it's like technically they'll say that the shrimp is unclean because it will, quote unquote, what cleans the sea and all this kind of stuff. But it's like you do realize that plants thrive off of shit, right? They, they thrive off of manure. Plants thrive off of blood, bones and manure. I don't know if people know that. But then again, you know, I'm over what it's been about 
Mm, it's been a few generations that my family has owned land, done animal husbandry, and grown their own food for generations. Not just one generation, but for generations. So I'm I'm very well aware of the of the practices of how they of how they grow their food and cow manure, fish heads, and that blood is what brings a lot of the nutrients to the plant. I hate apartheid with I have party oh I have party with people who were Islam and ate oysters exactly, but technically oysters fill to the water in the sea. You see what I mean? And people talk about how pork is like, oh, it'll eat anything. It has it has parasites, all this kind of stuff. But it's like, so does shrimp. So do oysters. <laughs> so does crab. So does lobster. But we're so against pork. You see what I'm saying? And oysters are like the highest in zinc. And I'm I'm allergic to shellfish, so I can't even I can't even um, eat it anyway. But still, it's just like people have their like people don't realize how hypocritical they are actually. And it's because, the, and that's how you can tell that it's, it's brainwashing, really. And again, I'm not against what people don't eat because I respect people's um, people's religious choices. You see what I'm saying? And whatever deity you're going to, um, you know, the, the instructions you're going to hear to, I respect that. But we, but we have to understand that just because that's what you choose, that doesn't make the food, um, that doesn't make the food bad. It's just not for you. You said, but I don't eat those either. No, I get it. I feel you. It's not a problem. I, I, I respect that. I respect what people choose for themselves. I just don't respect when people throw propaganda around it. That's the part I don't respect. Because you don't yuck someone up, you know, someone's yum. That's the thing. Just don't do what's for you and keep it that way. But the whole, like, you know, but I noticed there are nutrients against depression in those foods. Oh, yeah, no, for facts. Like, especially oysters. I think oysters are probably, of all the sea... Uh, Wesley Price talked about is how the cultures that ate seafood had the best bone structure out of all the <clears throat> out of all the people that he noticed out of all the people that he observed on, on all the continents the people who ate seafood had the best structure and I again I'm I'm Gullah Geechee on my dad's side they eat seafood <laughs> they eat seafood I mean crab boils and all of that so but I'm allergic so I mean I couldn't eat it if I wanted to at least as of now, I'm allergic. You know, I, I started being allergic when I was like 19. And I don't know if that's a if that's a gut difference thing or or what. Some people say that you know it's just your gut can be off a little bit, like the bacteria and all that kind of stuff, and so it'll make you allergic. But I don't know. I don't get too deep into it. I break out so bad. I don't, I just I don't I don't mess with it. But um. But yeah, it's just restrictive enzymes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that 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 could be that could be that too. So, I, I'm not too sure. It's just you know, whenever I have been exposed to shrimp, or um, okay, yeah, I agree, I agree. They do change as we age. So, you know, I don't even mess with it. Certain things I don't I don't I don't experiment with because um, I don't know if any of you have ever had an allergic reaction. But they say they get worse as you get older, and that's not something I'm looking to do because my dad was like very allergic to shrimp and, and shellfish and stuff like that. So I don't even play with that because I don't like to play with my life like that. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, the thing is this, right? Like somebody can just like the way people can get on here and be like, oh, no, I don't eat pork. I don't eat this. I don't eat that. And I'm like, I totally respect that. I don't have no problem with that. You know, it's just the fact that people have to stop demonizing foods just because it's against their it's it's their taboo. That's the part. Just like you said, yep, live and let live and stop demonizing food. That's the part. That's the part, you know? Because for some people, like for instance, in um in Ishesha or some people commonly call Ifa, guess what? When you go for that reading, um, Ifa Arumila will take pork. What I mean by that is, you know, for for people who don't know, uh in different traditional systems, and this is not just in Africa, this is also in the indigenous systems in America, uh, around the world, okay? Um, their deity, if if you, if you are going for like a consult or whatever, what have you, and, um, you know, you need to change the outcome of certain situations, for instance, death, you know, that could potentially be coming upon you untimely death, you know, not the time when it's meant for you to die, but untimely death. And you can, you can avert that 
And one of those aversions is going to be um, not all the time, but majority of the time that I've seen from my experience is going to be some type of animal sacrifice, you know, some type of animal sacrifice. And that animal might be pork. And generally, after the sacrifice, whatever the deity is not accepting, like whatever it doesn't ask for, the people eat, the village eat. So people are eating that, you know. So it's like, so that's the thing. It's like people be like, oh, yeah, it's an African, you know, traditional systems. And then it's like, but you demonize pork. And that is literally used <laughs> in a, you know what I'm saying? Like, it, it can be used. This is potential that it may be needed in order to either bring blessings or avert evil in your life. So you got to be very careful with those type of things when you're demonizing foods. You know, not that it's a taboo, but that it's, you know, demonized. For some people, it's a taboo for them to eat pork, you know, or other foods and stuff like that. So I just wanted to say that because it is, it's just a little like, I, I used to be that person like, oh, no, to this food and then to that food. And it's just like, it's not really about that. <laughs> it's a little deeper than that, you know, and we have to mature past that point. You know, children in our and the way that we see things and the way that we act when we are, when we have quote unquote knowledge on something, you know, but we got to mature past that. And like you said, live and let live and stop demonizing things. So that's that. My whole point is get back to what your grand, your great grandma ate. Uh, Cause maybe your grandma didn't eat the most, you know, the best things, but maybe your grand, your great grandma did get back to those traditional foods, get back to those food ways you know, some people out here are like, oh, be carnivore, you know, do this and do that. I'm not, I'm not like that. I'm more like, I'm more on the, on the fence of like, sometimes you need to be carnivore to heal yourself, you know, and then introduce foods back into it. And I talk about that in the book where we, where we do the whole elimination um, and get to, to find out what your normal is and what your standards are. And that way you can start to add things back and, and change different things because sometimes you can't eat certain foods. You just need to like heal your gut or heal different aspects of yourself before you before you introduce those foods again, you know? So that's also a thing. And it's just being able to test those things out. But um but yeah, I mean <clears throat> when you are uh, you know, introducing foods and you are eating certain foods, I'm just not of that whole point of like everybody needs to be carnivore and all plants are bad. But I do think that you need to ferment, soak and sprout these vegetables, you know, and cook them with some good animal fats, which is why oftentimes collard greens are cooked with, you know, fat back and <laughs> uh, turkey necks and stuff like that, you know. So we do need to understand how to prepare these vegetables so that we can optimize them and they're not wreaking havoc on our gut. However, I don't think that you know, everybody has to eat the same way because that's not something that we find. What we find consistent, even when we look at the work of Weston A. Price, what we find consistent, and I talk about this in the book, we, what we find consistent is that people everywhere, no matter who they are, what they look like, always ate food that was from their natural environment, period. And they optimize that food so that they can digest and absorb it, period. You know, so... That's that for this one. I appreciate everyone for, for getting on and for being present for this. Um, I will be, the book is launching and I will be doing a lot of lives just talking about the book. Uh, generally my lives, you can see me obviously, but this is just early in the morning and I just wanted to get this off my mind. So um, I pray you all have a wonderful day. Keep your head on a swivel. Ladies, please keep your head on a swivel. That means looking up at all times. Do not keep your head in that phone um because that's dangerous okay keep a keep a eye out at all times and follow your intuition and i will see you guys either in my reels or in my next live i appreciate you